Have you ever wondered how reliable double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trials truly are? It's a hefty question, isn't it? These trials, often viewed as the gold standard in clinical research, play a pivotal role in shaping our understanding of medicine and healthcare. But are they truly as infallible as we believe them to be? In the world of scientific research they hold an esteemed position. They help determine the efficacy of new treatments, the safety of new drugs and contribute significantly to the advancement of medical knowledge. Yet as with anything, they are far from perfect. There are criticisms, shortcomings, limitations that merit discussion. Are these trials always reliable? Are they always applicable? And what are the potential flaws that could skew the results? These are the questions we will be addressing in this discussion. In order to understand the criticisms, we first need to understand what these trials actually are. Let's delve deeper into this fascinating world. A double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial is a mouthful, isn't it? But don't worry, it's not as complex as it sounds. Let's break it down piece by piece. First, double-blind. This term is used to describe a study where neither the participants nor the researchers know who is receiving the actual treatment and who is receiving the placebo. It's like a game of hide-and-seek where both the hider and the seeker are blindfolded. This helps to eliminate bias and ensures that the results are due to the treatment and not influenced by the participants' or researchers' expectations. Next up, randomized. In a randomized trial, participants are randomly assigned to either the treatment group or the placebo group. It's like flipping a coin to decide who gets what. The goal here is to ensure that any differences observed between the groups are due to the treatment and not some other factor. And finally, placebo-controlled. In these trials, one group receives the actual treatment and the other gets a placebo, a substance that looks and feels like the treatment but has no therapeutic effect. It's like giving someone a sugar pill instead of a painkiller to see if the belief in the treatment can cause a change. This helps to determine if the treatment is more effective than doing nothing or just believing that you're getting treatment. So when you put it all together, a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial is a study where participants are randomly assigned to receive either the treatment or a placebo, and neither the participants nor the researchers know who is getting what. These trials are considered the gold standard in clinical research because they help to ensure that the results are accurate and unbiased. But just like everything else in life, they're not perfect. They have their own set of criticisms and limitations. Now that we understand what these trials are, we can dive into some of the criticisms and limitations. Despite being considered the gold standard in clinical research, double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trials have their share of criticisms. One of the most commonly voiced criticisms revolves around ethical concerns. Some argue that withholding treatment from a group of patients who are then given a placebo may be morally questionable especially in cases where effective treatment exists. This is a complex issue, and while safeguards exist to protect patient welfare, it's important to remember that these concerns are valid and warrant discussion. Another criticism is the generalizability of the results. In these trials, researchers often select participants who are most likely to show a response to treatment. These participants may not represent the broader population. For instance, trials often exclude older adults, children, pregnant women, and people with multiple health conditions. This leads to a significant question. Do the results of these trials apply to everyone, or just a select group? Then, there's the influence of the placebo effect. This is a psychological phenomenon where patients improve simply because they believe they are receiving treatment. It's a powerful effect and can make it challenging to determine whether the observed improvements are due to the treatment itself or the patient's belief in the treatment. In some cases, the placebo effect can even outperform the actual treatment. A related criticism is that these trials may not be the best approach for all types of research. For instance, they may not be suitable for studying lifestyle interventions, such as diet and exercise, or complex treatments like psychotherapy. Lastly, there's the issue of funding. These trials are expensive. Often they are funded by pharmaceutical companies with a vested interest in positive outcomes. This can potentially introduce bias, as companies may have an incentive to design trials in ways that favor their products. But criticisms are just one part of the story. There are also limitations to consider. Every research method has its limitations and double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trials are no exception. Firstly, these trials, despite their rigorous design, cannot definitively prove causation. This is a fundamental limitation in experimental research. 
While these trials can show a relationship or correlation between a treatment and an outcome, they cannot conclusively establish that the treatment is the cause of the outcome. There could be other factors at play that the study design did not account for, and those factors could be influencing the results. Another limitation lies in the exclusion of certain populations. Trials often use a specific set of inclusion and exclusion criteria to select participants. This means that certain groups, such as children, pregnant women, the elderly, or individuals with multiple medical conditions, are often left out. Consequently, the results of the trial might not be applicable to these excluded groups. This limits the generalizability of the study findings. Additionally, the double-blind design, while minimizing bias, does not completely eliminate it. For instance, researchers may unconsciously influence the trial outcomes through their expectations or behaviors, a phenomenon known as the experimenter effect. Similarly, participants may figure out whether they are in the treatment or placebo group based on the side effects they experience, potentially influencing the results. Furthermore, placebo-controlled trials often require a comparison to a sugar pill, a treatment that has no therapeutic effect. This raises ethical concerns, especially when effective treatments are already available. In such cases, it may be considered unethical to withhold treatment from the control group. Lastly, these trials can be costly and time-consuming. They require a large number of participants and extensive resources to conduct. This means that not all research questions can feasibly be answered using this method. Understanding these limitations helps us to critically evaluate the results of these trials. It's essential to remember that while double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trials are a gold standard in research, they are not flawless. Their results should always be interpreted within the context of their limitations. Despite these criticisms and limitations, are double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trials reliable? This question brings us to the heart of the matter, the reliability of these trials. Despite their shortcomings, the strength and reliability of these trials lie in their methodological rigor. At its very core, this method is designed to control for confounding variables, those unpredictable, uncontrolled elements that could skew the results of a study. This is achieved by randomizing the assignment of participants to either the treatment or control group. By doing this, any impact of these confounding variables is spread equally across both groups, thus reducing their potential to bias the results. It's like shuffling a deck of cards to ensure a fair game. Moreover, the double-blind aspect of these trials adds another layer of reliability. Neither the participants nor the researchers know who is receiving the treatment and who is getting the placebo. This feature helps to reduce bias on two fronts. On one hand, it eliminates the placebo effect among participants. On the other hand, it prevents researchers from inadvertently influencing the results due to their expectations or prejudices. The placebo control group also plays a pivotal role in bolstering the reliability of these trials. By comparing the effects of the treatment against a placebo, we can distinguish the actual impact of the treatment from the psychological impact of simply receiving care. This allows us to ascertain whether the treatment itself is effective. In essence, the strength of double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trials lies in their ability to reduce bias and control for confounding variables, thus ensuring the reliability of their results. They provide a rigorous, methodical approach that sets a high standard for clinical research. While they are not without their limitations and criticisms, these trials are a critical tool in our scientific arsenal. They offer us a reliable and objective means of testing treatments, ultimately helping us to improve healthcare and save lives. While not perfect, these trials are a crucial tool in our scientific arsenal. So where does this leave us? We've taken a deep dive into the world of double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trials, peeling back the layers to expose the inner workings of this gold standard of clinical research. We've dissected the criticisms and limitations from issues of cost and time to the ethical dilemmas and potential for bias to the challenges of blinding and the often overlooked placebo effect. Despite these hurdles, we've also acknowledged the reliability of these trials. Their core strength lies in their design, which minimizes bias and provides the most objective results in medical research. When conducted properly, these trials offer robust data that can guide treatment decisions and shape healthcare policy. Yet, it's essential to remember that no research method is flawless. It's clear that while these trials have their shortcomings, they still play a vital role in medical research. As always, it's important to critically evaluate any research we come across. 
If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.